Yeah, I think it's a particularly uncertain period because uh, there are many, uh, you know, different different data, different uh, uh, events uh, pulling in different directions. As you mentioned, uh, today we have important data because we have uh, GDP numbers out of uh, Germany, but also also uh, the flash estimate for the eurozone overall, and then uh, industrial production. These are going to be very soft numbers, and uh, investors will be. Um, puzzled by the situation. Clearly, we know that there are temporary factors. So there is a situation in the automotive uh, um, sector. Um, but uh, uh, the problem is that uh, some economies, uh, typically the Germany, but also Italy and others, are affected by uh, the slowdown in global trade. And how far this can go, it's uh, still a question mark. So I think uh, the, there is a concern about uh, growth uh, in the Eurozone. And secondly, I think, uh, um, as you mentioned, uh, Brexit and Italy. Brexit, we got the breakthrough yesterday, and the big question mark today is how many people, how many members of parliament, sorry, member of government will resign today, uh, given that yesterday uh, the draft proposal of, uh, for, for the agreement with the EU was passed uh, uh, in the cabinet. But uh, we know for sure that some members of the, of the current uh, government in the UK will uh, will not agree with that, and so today we are waiting for the resignations. On Italy, yesterday, and uh, you know, over the past few days, we got a very heated debate uh, between Italy and uh, and the EU, and uh, and eventually we got uh, the reply by the Italian authorities. And uh, now the market is wondering what's the next step. The next step is likely to be uh, on the 21st with the with uh, the Commission. Uh, uh, producing a report uh, which is effectively proposing um, to push Italy into excessive uh, debt procedure, um, uh, which is again the first step uh, uh, to, for the decision that probably will come in January by ministers to go along these lines. How do the bankers need to play this here? Because essentially this draft Brexit deal is going to end the UK's easy access to EU financial markets. I mean, are we going to see uh, more financial institutions uh, flying from the UK or heading to other European capitals like Frankfurt, for example, or Paris? Or is that over? I, well, it is ongoing. So I think uh, it's difficult to, to pinpoint exactly how much and how strong that this phenomenon will be. Uh, but at least uh, um, there is a deal now on the table, which is positive in my view. And indeed, uh, if this deal goes through and uh, manages to, to, to be successful, because uh, there is a big uncertainty right now whether this will pass uh, um, uh, the, uh, the UK Parliament, uh, um, then, then if, if that goes through, it would be hugely positive, because at least we have a solution. There was a huge uh, question mark about uh, the position of the UK uh, relative to the EU, and now at least we have some answers here. So I think this is going to be positive, and uh, as soon as we see some certainty also on the possibility to, to have an approval um, here in the UK Parliament, uh, this would be certainly a positive factor for uh, the pound sterling. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.